Right, third and final walking sim adventure game is The Town of Light. I'm going into this one pretty much blind. I think the only reason I got it is because I found it pretty cheap, brand new, so why not? I don't know much about the developers. I'm going to have to check on the back here. Who it is. It's published by THQ Nordic, but the developers are lka.it. So I don't know anything about them. I've never heard of them before, so I've got no like reference for the quality of their games or anything like that. I believe this is supposed to be psychological horror of some sorts. It says it's inspired by true places and events, or true events and real places, same thing. It does have some uh, photographs. Let's open this up, take a look at these, because it's quite a strange addition. Uh, to the physical copy. No manual of any sort, which is common these days, but usually if you get something it'll be a manual or something like that, or just a little card with a download code or something stupid. But a bunch of photographs is a little strange, a little bit different. Well, it's a photograph of a bunch of abandoned buildings, or one abandoned building, I guess. The only way I'm gonna know if these are accurate at all is by playing the game and seeing if it matches up to the photos, but... I don't know, here's one, I guess. There you go. Old abandoned building in Italy. Ooh, that one's alright, look at that. Little wheelchair there. Abandoned building. Cool. Usually this sort of thing you would find like the bonus features of a game, some like concept art plus photos of a real place if it was based on it. A bit odd that you just get them physically, but nothing else is yeah, fair enough though. I'll never complain about getting anything extra with my physical copy, so I'll take these happily, although I'm really struggling to get these back in their plastic packaging. There we go, that took way too long. I'll cut that out. All I can do now is play it, so let's go ahead. So, sadly, I'm going to have to say that The Town of Light is probably the most disappointing out of the three walking sims that I've played so far. So I'll start with the basics, stuff that's not good or bad. Just giving a little introduction to the game, plays just like a walking sim. First person, you walk around, there's a few things you can interact with. And as has been the standard, interaction is usually a basic button press. Nothing special, no full-on gameplay. So I usually start talking about the setting with this style of game, so I'll do the same here, and it's one of the more disappointing aspects. An abandoned insane asylum in Italy based off a real place actually sounds pretty cool. And I mean for like a psychological horror game setting, not as a, like a cool place to hang out, but you get what I mean. And I can't say it's not accurate. You know, you look around and yeah, it looks like a abandoned building. But this is almost where being based on real events and based on real places kind of works against it a little bit, because it's exactly like most abandoned buildings. It's kind of creepy to start with, but you quickly learn it's pretty much just a big empty place that's a little downtrodden and dirty. A lot of areas are pretty much pointless. It does get a little bit bland quite quickly, because you're seeing the same thing over and over again. And even a lot of the objects you interact with, it seems completely pointless. There's no purpose to it, it doesn't add anything to the story or the history. You just pick something up and look at it and it's like, well, yeah, th there it is, but why do I care? And you will find yourself, a lot of the time, having to walk back and forth through these areas without it being that appealing to the eye. And without much suspense, this isn't really a horror game. It does depict disturbing events, especially since they're based on reality, and I'll get more into that when I talk about the story. But that's it, it's, it's the idea of what was happening that's horror, not the actual setting or what's going on in the game itself. The whole play area loses that sense of mystery and horror and suspense, once you realise that nothing's gonna happen. You know, nothing's actually gonna scare you. There's not gonna be any jump scares, there's not gonna be any foreboding feeling. It doesn't make the strongest use of sound to build tension or anything like that. 
it is quite literally like walking through an abandoned building in real life. You'll probably be a bit nervous at first, but once you've walked up and down a few times in the middle of the day, you'll get over it. So the setting is disappointing, but the strong part is the story. So it's based on real events, more in a kind of loosely inspired by research of what things were like in 1930s, 1940s Italy for mental patients. It is based on a real Italian psychiatric hospital that was infamous for mistreatment of its patients, and the story that unfolds explores that pretty well, as in it's pretty accurate and it's pretty heavy, it does not hold back when it comes to the depiction of mental illness, of how people believed to have mental illness were treated, and the ultimate end results. Now, I'm not 100% sure what or who you play as. That may sound like a weird thing to say. The game explores the story of Renee, a patient in the hospital, in the 1930s and 1940s. However, the game is taking place in the modern day, 2016 specifically. But you seem to be playing as Renee and you get a lot of flashbacks and memories. But from what you see of yourself, you're not elderly, but you seem to be discovering stuff as Renee, as she was in the modern world, almost like you're a ghost of some sort. I don't know, it's not really made clear, and it feels like they had a couple of ideas going as to how this was going to be played, as to whether it was going to be a modern setting, an old setting, whether you're going to be someone exploring someone else's story or your own story. So it just kind of gets mashed up without there being any real clarity on what's going on. It's not super important, but if you start looking into it in as much depth as I just did, it is a little confusing. Anyhow, the story is told to you through a variety of means, sometimes through dialogue, um, recollecting memories of Renee. Um, lots of documents you will find littered about the place. Some of these are pretty interesting, some are a little dull and you wonder what the point of them is. And then flashbacks, which take two forms. Sometimes a cutscene that's animated, and sometimes one you play through. And these are actually relatively effective, although the dated graphics do take a little bit away from it. It does, on the whole, provide a pretty harrowing look at mental illness, sexual abuse, physical abuse, mental abuse, a horrible, cold, harsh reality that people actually had to live through. And as uncomfortable as it can be, this is its biggest strength. If the game had put more time focusing on this, and cut out a lot of what makes the game drag, it would have been a much better experience. When you're trying to tell such a serious and real story, Having a game where there's quite a few irritating technical issues that remind you that you're playing a video game quite a lot can detract from it, as well as the game being really quite sluggish, it makes you go through areas again and again that you've already been through, that you've seen everything inside of. There's far too many of these areas which are pretty much empty. The game guides you through the chapters and the story in a very linear fashion. So an awful lot of this could have been cut and streamlined so you don't have to spend a lot of your time just kind of aimlessly wandering about. It does appear that the story can vary a little bit. You do get moments where you have multiple choices you can pick from and this can result in certain chapters playing out a little bit different but the whole tedious nature of the game kind of puts me off trying to do that and be a completionist here. Walking Sims rely so heavily on their setting that when that isn't working, it really has a big effect on the whole experience. The gameplay is often sluggish and poor. For something as simple as a walking simulator, uh, most of what you interact with seems to serve no purpose. It is a good and sobering story, but it's held back by below average gameplay, dated visuals, and just far too much filler. They try too hard to add hours onto the gameplay time, but when it just wasn't necessary, this could have been an hour and a half to two hour experience that instead takes four, five, or six. It almost didn't need to be a video game. Everything video gamey doesn't really work. It's only the story. They should have just told a story here, made it an animated short or a film or something like that.
Well, there we go. That was a little bit disappointing. It's not a bad game, don't get me wrong uh, from what I've said. But it's certainly not the best example of a walking simulator game. Actually, I'd say the best example I've ever played would have been Firewatch um, last video. With the Town of Light, it's almost there. It just seems like it needs a little bit of refining. There's a lot of elements which kind of drag it down a bit and make the game a little bit on the boring side half the time. It doesn't play to its strengths enough, and it does have them, particularly in terms of the story. Now I did read one review on the game, and I always leave reading reviews to after I've played it so it doesn't influence how I feel, um, but this one's worth referencing because it does sum up how I would recommend this game quite nicely, which is you don't really have to play it. All this did was make me kind of interested in the history it represents, the Italian mental institutions, how they treated people, what they did to them. And the review said to just go read up on this stuff. Do you do some research on it, read on the history. And yeah, that's pretty much my recommendation there, if that sounds like something that would be interesting to you. Because this game, it kind of drags. And the best bits are rooted in the historical aspect of it. It is an okay game, but I wouldn't recommend going out of your way to play it. It's the longest out of the three walking sims I've looked at um, this past week or so. So whilst it's a quick experience in terms of just a video game, compared to other games in the genre where it feels like you get a lot crammed into a small amount of time, I don't know, this really doesn't do that for me. I guess that's how I'll end it with the Town of Light. Um, I feel like I kind of played these walking sims in the wrong order. I probably should have started with this one, but how was I to know? I hadn't actually played any of them before, so I didn't know which one was better and which one was worse. Like I said a second ago, I tried to keep looking at reviews until after I've played a game, so my opinions are completely fresh, or as fresh as they can be if it's a game I've never played before. So that'll do for walking simulator games for now. I had a bit of fun with them. They were nice, easy, quick reviews to do during a period of my life where I'm quite busy. So these were easy little videos to make. If I had to recommend one, or no, I'll put them in order. Play Firewatch, that comes first. Dear Esther, give it a go if you like that style. And The Town of Light, you've got much better options elsewhere. Well, I guess it's time for me to go. It's our first time we've had a couple of guests on the show. Come here. Oh my god. Yeah, I think this is me being told to feed him, so I'll see you guys next time. I think I'm going to go with something PlayStation 2.